Life Unscripted with Kevin Shook. So, welcome to Life Unscripted. Um, today, I have a couple friends of mine here, and um, I've known them for a while. They've known me for a while. They know everything about me. They do know my life has been unscripted, but here we are. And, and I can't like thank them enough for being great friends of mine and stuff. So, um, introduce yourselves. Uh, JD, you want to start? So, I'm JD Prescott. I serve uh, House District 33, which is Randolph, Blackford County is complete, uh, two-thirds of Jay, a third of Delaware, and a little bit of Henry County as well. I've been in the state house since 2018. I was first elected. Family Farms, a little little over 3,000 acres in Randolph County, still involved in the farm, own multiple small businesses. And Wait a storage minute. Unit. I'm going to stop you there because your brother the other day was like, are you sure you know how to drive that thing? <laughs> so I, I have stepped back a little bit on the farm since I've been in the state house to have of okay. a few irons in the fire, but I'm still out there on the farm. I I still don't drive everything. My my younger brother tries to uh, harass me a little bit. Says, says I'm part time farmer now, but um, I can still still operate every everything. So, <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff, uh, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, JD, don't stay out too too long because technology changes by the minute. It seems like even in agriculture, right? Yeah. Uh, so instead of looking down the the uh, hood of the tractor to make sure you're going straight, now everything's uh, by GPS, right? Yep. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Jeff Rotz, Indiana State Senate District 27. Uh, today it is comprised of part of Franklin County, all of Union, all of Wayne, and all of Henry counties. So it. When was it? Was it uh, two years ago when they changed that? Correct. Yeah, it was. It, I guess it was last fall. Uh, not last fall. The fall before. So it's been about a year and a half since they've been been in effect. Correct. Yeah. Now, did, did that help things? Did it, it just didn't, didn't hurt? Didn't anything. really change anything yeah, no, much. I, I mean, it's uh, always. Uh, you know, you, I picked up a whole new county and lost Randolph County. Essentially, uh-huh. I had I lost Randolph County and part of Franklin County. I still have part of that. I lost a few townships there, and then. A, a township in Fayette County as well, so uh, it, it it worked out well. Okay, didn't really the, the the way the district is comprised didn't change really anything. Okay, uh, but gave opportunity, I guess, to get to know a whole <laughs> new group of people. Right, yeah. we still go to the picnic. We yeah, still right, go to yeah. the Prescott picnic. <laughs> August twenty fourth. Yeah. <laughs> we said in that video. Keep, keep the plug in. Yeah, yeah. August twenty fourth. <laughs> yeah. Well, this year I'll get on the on the calendar, JD. That's right. It, we sent it to you right away. I was, yeah. I'll pick yeah. you up. I'll yeah. be at your house yeah, as long as it don't rain. Right. Yeah, it's I'll, in a barn. I, good. <laughs> I told him about the time I had, I left the top off the jeep. <laughs> We're coming coming back in the rain. It was raining. And I'm like I'm like oh crap! I got the scissor with me. The top's off the jeep. It's raining. He's like no big deal. Yeah. I'm like it wasn't like it was pouring. Yeah. Uh, for sure. I'm glad I heard from you again after that. Yeah, I'm I'm not one. I, I'm I'm uh, quick to forgive. <laughs> um, yeah. So JD, uh, you're the District 33 rep mm-hmm. representative. So um, explain what the roles of a representative are. Yeah. Uh, so serving in the state house, we're up every two years. Unlike the senators, they're up every four years. So we're uh, constantly, it feels like I'm constantly in campaign mode on the, on the off years, but, or on the, when we're out of session, but, uh, during session, um, so one of the main responsibilities for me, I'm on the ways and means committee, the budgeting committee. So every, every two years, a state budget, uh, they have to originate out of the house. So we're heavily involved in, in crafting that state budget as well as, uh, just various laws that come before the general assembly as a whole, um, constituent service issues. I mean, we, we both get constituent service calls about every day, whether we're in session or out of session. So, uh, it's, um, it's a good mix of, of lawmaking, the budgeting process, uh, just the political process in general, helping people out with the constituent services issues. Um, sometimes it can be a little aggravating dealing with some of these departments that, uh, uh, we'd like to move things along a little quicker. Sometimes right. the speed of government's a little slower than what we'd like coming from the business world. But um, but overall, it's it's a really good process, and I uh, enjoy enjoy serving the people. And you've been out in it for how many years? Uh, six years. It's hard to believe, but yeah. I remember when you were first running because uh, Meeks introduced us at lunch at the little restaurant downtown Winchester. Yep. Yeah, which is now the pizza place. Uh, what, Chicago was it? Pizza. Yeah, was it Chicago Pizza at that time, or was it something? No, was, it was. Uh, it was that little deli, yeah, or deli yeah. shop, yeah, whatnot. Um, Jeff, so kind of explain what a senator does, um, because I, we, you know, a lot of people don't know the differences between 
senator and, and now your new position that you're running for. So, so uh, 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 the Senate is the upper chamber in the in the General Assembly, whether it's at the national level or, or at the local level. I'm, I'm kidding. We should have put him on a, like, a little higher pedestal <laughs> yeah, under yeah, his no. chair. <laughs> so it's like this. <laughs> Probably the only the only benefit, which is a, quite a benefit, as J.D. mentioned, is we have four-year terms, and so we're not continually in the election cycle, uh, which, which assists us from uh, having to be uh, on the election cycle all right. the time, essentially. So we get a reprieve in there somewhat, but, but you're really on, on stage all the time. Right. As JD mentioned, uh, uh, constituent services is at, at the top uh, and we get bogged down during session. <clears throat> um, sometimes because of what I do is chair the education committee. And I'm also on the receiving end of the ways and means I'm on appropriations now in, in the Senate for this, this the second year I've been on it. So we, we fine tooth comb, put our, signature on the budget, send it back. And then there's final negotiations before it comes to the end. And, and we all agree on it. So, <clears throat> but most of my time is spent on education okay. as the chairman. And so uh, that, that takes up a lot of my time. And so I focus on that even in, in the off session. Uh, so uh, a lot of talking and all I'm continually talking about it. So it keeps me busy for sure. Is there anything in the education world right now that, might be a cool topic to mention. Or? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that we're actually have been working on for a number of years is focusing on quality work-based learning uh, as well as apprenticeships. And that when I use the word apprenticeship, we generally, the culture thinks about unionized apprenticeships and that's, it could be part of it, but that's not all of it. We're basically, let's just use the word quality work-based learning opportunities for students in 11th and 12th grade where they actually go on on the job and get paid and we're working uh, diligently now to figure out how to give credits uh, maybe that's a business credit it could be accounting credit it could be multiple things and not only uh, credit in the k-12 space but also in higher ed mm -hmm. uh, so how that translates uh, the, the the work the actual working into credits uh, let's call it real world experience and I, I can refer back to myself. I like to do this. I'm not changing the subject, just sharing after I, uh, in the middle of a four-year degree in accounting and IT back in the day, um, uh, I had to learn from someone who had practical experience when I got on the job <laughs> in a few areas. And right. so, yeah, you, you can't you can't deny that there's a great opportunity for people to learn uh, hands-on. Like their technicals. Exactly. Programs. Such, such like a program that you're running right here, this podcast, the things mm -hmm. that you know, you could teach a, a student <clears throat> and they could come out the mm -hmm. other side with a uh, skills, a skill set that's ready to go. Right. So, right. And I see, so I didn't, I didn't really go to college. My paramedic program was credited through IUP, IUPUI, but it didn't come with a degree or nothing. Sure. Um, all of this was uh, YouTube University, which is what <laughs> I'll always be a student of YouTube University. Yeah. Um, it, but you got to be passionate. And um, I've, I've seen there's a, a shift. So like in, in high school, you know, I think I made it through Algebra 1. Um, but I went to like automotive vocational instead of algebra 15 and I went to woods manufacturing yeah. and, you know, I think I got, I think they told me to leave Spanish class cause I just couldn't <laughs> get it. So like, I, you know, I had an F my English in, in English, my 12th grade year. So I was like, but I, I was, you know, I wish I was a better student, but, um, I am very thankful that I can change my brakes on my car. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm real thankful I can fix stuff. And um, so, you, so it wasn't a waste of time. Sometimes even right. I think students will, in your case may go to like auto shop, not necessarily because it's the interest, but just to get by. Yeah. So that's good that you learned some of those basics. Oh yeah. And, and I mean that those are skills you'll carry with you forever, yeah. you know? Um, so that's really cool. And I, I've seen that shift recently um, our, some of our local college, our community college out here, um, they're working with some manufacturing facilities here in Richmond to develop technical training programs to help with the workforce. And that, uh, honestly, that's the part that I like about it the most because uh, as an employer, uh, they could actually uh, help create their own workforce pipeline mm -hmm. uh, by having students participate High school, the last couple of years of high school, or during college, 
uh, and uh, they're providing an invaluable experience for them. But ultimately, there's some self self preservation in there as well that they're actually preparing their own workforce or participating in that. And so that's uh, yeah, that's happy. Yeah, it benefits both sides. Right. Great. You know, you start with an internship, and it goes from there, and yeah. provide their uh, education if they want to further their education, create that buy-in. You foster a great work environment, and hope they stick with yeah. you. No, 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 that's one thing we don't talk about enough. I think, and uh, that's it's incumbent upon the employer to be a good actor in this situation as well. And I, I think it, they're they they are today. That's different than what it used to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're you're absolutely right. JD, do you have any good topics to talk about that's uh, current events? In- well, <clears throat> piggybacking off of what Jeff was talking about with some of the things going on with education, I was reading, an, actually I had an article sent to me this morning uh, where Texas was stating that the future of their uh, state really hinges on the success of their um, their voucher program where they're, they're expanding school choice in, in Texas. And that's one of the things that I think we've worked on both in Ways and Means and partnership with Jeff and, and education and is is really making sure that we're the number one state uh, mm-hmm. for school choice, making sure every student has an equal opportunity uh, on on the best education path forward for them. So uh, that's that's one thing that we've really been able to work together with him being on both education and appropriations. Uh, that's been a, a huge help in, in making sure that we've we've been the true leader. So so te- like I was saying, that article that I was reading this morning, it, it referenced Indiana as being being one of the leaders that they're they're. They're trying to chase us down and catch up with us, but we're, I think we're going to keep our foot nice. on the gas and, and so, keep it up. explain the voucher program. How does this work? Yeah, so it's uh, 300% of the um, free and reduced lunch rate of a family of four, for example, would be like $220,000 to be eligible for the voucher. Uh, and it, it covers 90% of the education fund dollars that would go to, that would traditionally, if that student went to a traditional public school and then, then switched to a voucher school, Ninety uh, percent of those dollars would follow, so it's actually um, more financially uh, responsible for, from a state perspective because we're educating those dollars at a, at a reduced rate, but um, getting quality education, uh, getting faith-based education. And some of my my children go to a, a voucher accepting school, and my wife and I chose that because of the faith-based as- aspect. We're Baptist, uh-huh. if we went to a Baptist school, so um, it's. One of the misconceptions that's out there that that our opposition throws out all the time is that uh, you know these schools don't have to follow uh, private schools don't have to follow the same standards as traditional public schools and um, what they tell you is a mistruth. Voucher schools, uh, if if they are a private school that are voucher accepting, they have to follow the same state standards as the, as the public schools. But if it's a private school that's not voucher accepting, which means they don't accept these tax dollars, then they then they, they can, don't have to. So. So, that, right. so a lot of times you got to look out for that that misinformation that's being thrown out there. But but there are really good options. We're, we're um, and the number of students that are that are taking advantage of this program that are participating continues to grow year over year. There's high demand. Um, so I think it's been a great success for our, our workforce development in our state and really college readiness as well. So very cool. <clears throat> I want to let me add just a couple things there. That, yeah. That, so. Uh, <clears throat> the other piece of the puzzle is for voucher schools the property tax dollars stay in the in the in the place where in that district the, yeah they don't follow the the child uh they actually stay so JD lives in whatever he lives in Randolph County mm-hmm. so those property tax dollars still go to the school district that he resides in okay do not does not follow the child and so uh in across the state it's the average is $3300 per student that's generated by property tax of course, that's an average. So there's some that much higher and some that are lower than that, obviously. But so that's an, actually an advantage to the local public school. They get to keep those dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, uh, there are a lot of misnomers about it. But really, it comes down to parental choice. Mm-hmm. Parents decide where their their student goes and what what ultimately, as far as the state is concerned, at least myself, we, we really need outcomes. We're struggling with uh uh, academic proficiency across the United States and Indiana is no exception to that problem. Interesting. I remember uh, the picnic circa 2000. When did we get rained on? Cause I got to give you guys kudos for doing what you're doing. Um, I know we're all public servants here, uh, but I have to give you guys major kudos 
we were at your picnic and we're trying, uh, I'm taking pictures because mm-hmm. Mama Prescott always asks me to take pictures and she always has the homemade ice cream. Yep. And um, of course, you know, in in politics, we always have, there's always topics and there, you know, the news is always bringing up topics and hot topics, not. Um, so Jeff's whittling away over here trying to get ice cream one day. And uh, so I'm just taking pictures. We're kind of talking and then a group of people come around and they're really nice. And they, they start engaging in conversations with Jeff and asking him questions about certain topics and everything else. And uh, he cares. I've known both of you forever and you guys care. Mm-hmm. And that's the, you're not just trying to get a vote. You guys genuinely care what people think. Um, I just felt bad because he's trying to get to the ice cream machine <laughs> and he gets like 10 more feet. He has a conversation and, and he gets 10 more feet and a different group came around and started asking the same questions. I was like, man, he should have just had a microphone a little bit ago. And um, he, he he expressed like, he, I mean, he genuinely cared. So he talked to him. And meanwhile, I'm like sitting back there eating ice cream, just looking at him. <laughs> that was, <laughs> do you remember that? Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. funny. So. Yeah. Kudos to you guys for stepping up because we all know, everybody knows um, these positions don't compensate like they should. So um, no one does what you guys are doing for money for for the uh, job itself, but more so you're to be a public servant because you're passionate about it. So um, I'm lucky to call you guys friends um, before anything else. And uh, I appreciate you guys being here today on Life Unscripted. Um, is there anything you want to close up the show with? Anything you want to mention? Uh, maybe how they could vote? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so election is coming up on May 7th. Early voting is uh, available right now, so you can go to your local courthouse and vote. Um, check your courthouse hours. Each each courthouse has different hours, and uh, some of them have lunch breaks and things where they um, have have specialized hours. So check your, check your courthouse for your early voting timelines. Uh, you can, uh, some elections, uh, are precinct. Some counties have precinct only, uh, others have vote center. So that'll be a little different too. So make sure you, um, check out the, uh, clerk of courts website. Maybe they, uh, some of them have social media pages as well. Uh, so <clears throat> anyway, then uh, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, we'll, we'll start early voting. You can, you can apply for an absentee ballot now, mm-hmm. Uh, and you already had to be registered to vote, and that has been, uh, I don't know, a week or so ago, you, or two weeks maybe, what was the deadline for? Actually, being, it, was, it was just a couple of days ago. It was okay. May 8th. Uh, or, or, yeah, it was the 8th, April 8th, because it was yes. on the eclipse. The deadline to be. Uh, like, hey, yeah. what did you guys think about that? <laughs> that was awesome. That was, <laughs> that was crazy. Was yeah. I was in the back of an ambulance with a patient. Oh, really? And like, yeah, transporting. <laughs> and the. And all of a sudden, like, as we're going down through Danville, I just, like, I see gas station lights. I kind of forgot. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, the eclipse. And we wheeled, wheeled the patient from the road to the hospital uh-huh. so he could look up and see it. <laughs> I think the coolest thing was, for me, it, it, the when it was about total, it, we could feel the temperature change, mm-hmm. like, maybe five degrees yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it was it was incredible. And then there was a, uh, <clears throat> there was a red dot on the base of the – when the moon was right in front of the sun, uh, there was a red dot and it was a solar, um, uh, what the guy called it. I forget exactly what it was, a but flare red dot, or hole or? solar flare or something. I can't remember yeah. the exact term, but it was, it was a, a red mm. dot right at the base of it. I think it was kind of the, but yeah, it was, uh, incredibly unique. Yeah. yeah. I think it was really cool because it brought people together. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like everyone stopped for a moment and <clears throat> all enjoyed it together. Um, that was cool. We had a big dinner at work and brought people together. I liked it. It wasn't the typical Hallmark holiday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. I wish we could do, do this every year, have an eclipse. Um, it was, it was wild. Yeah, well, and, sure. and we live, uh, kind of out, out in the country where there's nobody close around us. So it was, it was neat hearing all the, all, all right before the eclipse, all the birds started going, going crazy and, they? and the wildlife was making all kinds of animal or noises. Like, it turned so, the lights out. Yeah. So it was, <laughs> it was a little different and then, all, well, and then as soon as it got dark, they all went quiet. Um, and then they started going back again as soon as, as soon as it got light again. So it was, it was, was kind of neat to listen to that. That would have been cool. I, I, I heard that something similar, like 
some something similar like that was going to happen. But where I was at, we didn't. I didn't recognize, and so that I, w- I would have rather been there to te- be able to testify yeah, yeah. about the way the animals responded to it. Yeah, yeah, that that was that was man, that was something that was really cool. Um, so, District Thirty Three, which counties? Randolph, Jay, Blackford, Delaware, and Henry. And vote on what day? May seventh. Cool. And Jeffrey. So so. Uh, I'm actually in the middle of my Senate district race. And so I'm off the ballot as far as the Senate's concerned, but I'm on for the sixth congressional district. State law does not allow us to have a, to, to run for dual offices at the same time, but because I'm in the middle of my term, mm-hmm. I can run for the sixth congressional seat, which I'm doing. Uh, Greg Pence decided uh, late January that he was going to retire. And so it opened up that seat. So I'll be on the ballot uh, right now for the, the 6th Congressional District uh, to serve us in Washington, D.C. Wow. When you're vice president, president, promise me you'll come right back here and do another podcast. Absolutely. We'll do a... <laughs> <laughs> there's a helicopter pad sitting there. Yeah, we'll land it on top. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll have the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll come. That's for sure. Yeah. No, I'll I'll go right to JD's mom. Right, for it. Yeah. right. That's right. uh. I'd forgotten about that. I won't miss this year. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. About ten o'clock in the morning, I'll show up and start partaking in the homemade ice cream. <laughs> well, again, I appreciate you guys coming up here, having a conversation with me. It's really good. Um, I love doing these because I learn more about everyone. So uh, I have the Animal Care Alliance up here uh, once a month now. Sure. And they bring me a random animal. I told them I don't want to know what animal. <laughs> and they showed up last time with a red tail hawk. Nice. And it, she just held it, just sat right here next to me and did a podcast. I was like, wow. Was it, was it wild or was it a captive one? So they rescued it. Yeah. And, and the way Dr. Mad out there, um, the way she explained it is they think someone grabbed it as a little baby and tried to have it as a pet. And then once it got bigger, they tried to let it go, but it just sat on a porch. So it almost thinks it's a human. Sure. Um, so it lives out there at the ACA. Um, Ozzy's its name. And uh, it's really cool. Well, I mean, we've just taken selfies with it. and I mean, it chilled in here and did a podcast. So I mean, <laughs> it didn't talk much. But uh, yeah, so they can take care of exotic animals and stuff now out there. Oh, yeah. So that's why they... Uh, I'm familiar with where they're at. And I, I don't know quite their, um, what, what all it is that they do, what their mantra yeah. is, but... I'll take you out there sometime because I, I just go out there and start saying hi to the animals. They, I mean, they have owls, the little owls. Um, there's a couple of horses out there that have been rescued from auctions. Um, hawk. Yeah, there's quite a few things out there. But All right, that wraps up this episode of Life Unscripted. Life Unscripted with Kevin Shook. 